Dear Dad, You probably remember a theme park gate, as mom called it. I'll recap just in case and so you can hear it again from my point of view. I'm also going to post this letter online for reasons that I'll explain later, so the listeners need to know what happened. Ellie took her boyfriend and his best mate to the theme park. Logan and I tagged along. He was my oldest and, quite frankly, only friend. The cues for the rides were ridiculous. We waited three hours for one roller coaster. I wasn't hungry and didn't need to use the bathroom, so I stood in line for the next ride while the others went to find the restrooms and get food. Ellie and her friends joined me half an hour later, and they looked at me blankly when I asked about Logan. They swore they'd never heard of him. I told them it wasn't funny. I expected Logan to jump out of somewhere laughing. This wasn't his sense of humor, or Ellie's for that matter. But I thought the older boys must have put them up to it. Only... They looked at me like I was crazy the more I demanded to know Logan's whereabouts. Ellie's boyfriend accused me of pranking them, and his friend called me a spectacular actress. This was before the days of most people having a mobile phone, so I couldn't call Logan. I was hysterical. By the time the others insisted that we needed to go home, leaving Logan behind... Although in their minds, we weren't abandoning him because he didn't exist. Ellie called you and mom from a phone box when I refused to go without him. I was sure you would wonder what was wrong with her, but you didn't remember him either. He had been to our house countless times. You were friends with his parents and I mentioned them by name. And you told me they only had one child, a daughter. Logan's sister. I dug out the photo albums the moment we got home. Logan was missing from pictures he used to be in, including the framed one in my bedroom, which now showed an empty corridor. It made no sense. For months, I begged everybody to remember him, but as far as they were concerned, he never existed. His mom said it was strange because she was going to call her son Logan if she ever had a boy. She was adamant that she'd never told anyone this. But she still didn't believe me, just like everyone else. There are accounts of similar events online, but usually the writer moves away and returns years later to find their friend no longer exists. I couldn't find another account where the victim was there one instant and gone the next. The loss of Logan and the confusion around this traumatized me. But eventually, I moved on with my life. People insisted he was an imaginary friend to the point that I almost believed they were right. It wasn't until I met Luke that I got answers. You never liked him, did you? But as doomed as our relationship turned out to be, he was and still is the love of my life. The pieces connected on Valentine's Day when I saw his name in my card. It was Luke, with a C and not a K-E. I asked if it was short for anything. He said Lucifer. I joked, like the devil? and he told me he descended from Satan. After a moment's laughter, I realized he was serious. I wouldn't have believed him if not for what happened with Logan. I kept an open mind after his disappearance. I asked how he could be certain he was related to the devil. He said, because he has supernatural powers. I barely believed him, suspecting it was a joke after all until he told me the specifics. One man in every generation of his family is born with the ability to wipe humans from existence. They are erased from the world, absent from the minds of everyone that knew them, removed from photos, 
anything they ever wrote or sent. All gone. I asked if he took Logan. He said no, but it must have been someone with demon blood. According to Luke, some part demons erase humans for sport, while others remove people for their own safety or for the protection of others. The gift can only be used to take one person every 20 years to prevent people vanishing left, right, and center. I posed the question I had wondered since that day at the theme park. Why could I remember Logan? Luke said it's not unusual for there to be an exception. Somebody who was connected to the departed more intensely than anyone else. Logan was my soulmate. He was never going to be lost to me. I asked if Logan went to heaven. Luke said he didn't know where the erased souls end up. Some part demons believe they're moved to or still exist in another plane or universe. He couldn't even tell me what capacity heaven exists, but I didn't mind because I was comforted by the idea that in another life, me and Logan are still together, or at least is growing old somewhere, even if I don't feature in his new world. As you know, my romance with Luke was short-lived. I really loved him, but he was a complicated man with an uncontrollable temper. I was happier and safer with Rich, or that's what I told myself. Rich and I would have gone the distance if... I hadn't been infertile. I truly believe that. But the strain of our failure to conceive, followed by years of unsuccessful IVF, left our marriage on the precipice. Charlotte brought us back from the edge. I thought it wouldn't be possible to love anyone more than I loved you and Mum, more than I loved Logan, more than Luke, until I finally became a mother. I've often wondered if my infertility was a sign that I wasn't meant to have children. You convince me Charlie wasn't born to die, and that's why I'm writing this letter. I begged Luke to erase me from the world when the cancer took my little girl. I pleaded even harder that I'd beg for someone to believe me about Logan all those years ago. He refused. You found me at my lowest, the day you came round after Rich left. I asked if you wish I never had Charlie. You were adamant that you would take the pain of losing her for the time you had together. You said every day with her was precious and you'd never give that back. This stayed with me. It helped me carry on. Last night... I dreamt Logan and Charlie were together, but they were running from something. They weren't safe. I was woken by my phone. It was Luke calling, and he said if I still wanted him too, he would erase me. By the time you're reading this, I'm already with Luke. It's too late to stop me. Please, don't try. I'm hoping by sending this email from a friend's account, you'll still get it, even if I'm gone when you check your emails. I also had a voice artist record this letter and post it online. Luke will send you the link in case the email vanishes. If it's somebody else's voice uploaded to the internet when I still existed, surely it will remain. I hope so. I'm not doing this because I want to die. I'm leaving this version of Earth because Charlie could be alive somewhere else. What if she's in trouble? What if I could be with her in another world? I don't know if she's out there, but I know for certain I won't find her in this life. I hope you can understand and forgive me. Most of all, I hope you don't forget me. Luke says my family will still think of Charlie. You'll just be confused about her origins. Hold her close. She lives in your hearts and minds if nowhere else. 
You taught me that our memories are sacred, even if they're painful, so I know you wouldn't want or choose to lose all recollection of me. Mom will think she has one daughter. Ellie will tell people she's an only child. But you, Dad, be my exception. Picture my face. Remember me.